Hi, I'm Patrick, and I'm a compulsive gambler. Hi, Hi Patrick. Patrick. Here we are again, the Wednesday night participation meeting of the Westside Group of Gamblers Anonymous. Okay, the newcomers, welcome. You're in the right place. Ty, come on up, and let's start off this clam bake. My name is Ty, and I'm a compulsive gambler. Hi, Ty. Some of you who attended last Friday's meeting heard me going on about my 138 consecutive days not gambling, and about how important the program is to me, and how great it is to feel free again, how great it is to like myself. I bet you thought he's on a roll. I bet you thought he's gotten the program. I bet you looked up here at me blowing my own horn and said, he's a winner. If that's your bet, you lose. Because that's what I am, a loser. The very next day, the guy who owns the club I'm working in, he started talking to me about the Atlanta Falcon game, the point spread. and how the quarterback was hurt. And I started thinking. Bad move. <laughs> you got that right. Well, we all know the end of the story. I made a bet. One bet. That bet cost me my 138 days and $25,000. I don't have $25,000. You know, they say, you have to suffer to sing the blues. Hell, I'm singing better than ever. I was raised up on Jimmy Reed. Cold red, collard greens, and black eyed peas. Took my first bath on the water. Call your mama and I'll wash your daughters. I'm a blue. Then I tell I'm you. a blue man. I'm a blue man. I'm a blue man. I'm an original one of a kind. I don't do nothing for what's on my mind. Right. No Just let me show you your copy. Hey, guys, you made it. Sure. Come here. I want you to take a picture of me with my three oldest buddies in the entire world. Four gorgeous hunts. Squeeze in. Come on. Come on, guys. Smile for the lady. Come on. My private table. Thanks, baby. Gin and tonic, beer, and uh, bourbon, straight up. Just cut the crap and tell us what the hell this is all about. <laughs> well, fellas, I just seem to be a little strapped for cash. I wonder if you could help me out. We can't handle any more of this. This is the last time, boy. Uh huh. Last time. here didn't believe I know you. <laughs> well, this is Conrad McMahon. Conrad. You were great. Just didn't that nice you? Yeah. How long are you going to be here? Well, actually, it looks like this might be my home for a while. All right. You'll see a lot of us. <laughs> Want a drink? Uh, sure. You know, I have some business to take care of. Can I take a rain check? You got it. Right. Hey, Conrad. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> ben, it's always great. Yeah. See you later. Yeah, great, huh? Yeah. Didn't that tell you? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, fellas, relax. It's not like you have a whole lot of choice. Eric. Eric, I need to talk to you. Later. 
Look, man, you owe the guys more than a grand. Why owe you owe me 25 grand, see? So don't you start leaning on me. Look, I'm not asking for myself. I'm asking for the band. Back off. Not until you pay them. Look, let's, uh, let's just calm down. Huh? We'll settle this tomorrow in my office. 10 a.m. Cash money. Sorry about that. That's so what you say, fellas. 50,000 apiece ought to do it. Damn blood sucker. This is the last time you got that. This is it. That's what I said. Come on, fellas. I don't hit you up on a regular basis. Just when I need it. Bring the money. Send the police to Gaston's Blues Club. There's a man shot here. Hurry! I don't know how the money or the gun got in my car, I swear. It's not your gun? I hate guns. I've never owned one in my life. The police assume the money came from the safe in Eric's office. I didn't take it, Ben. Well, uh, who, who knew you were going to be there this morning? Nobody. At least I didn't tell anybody. Maybe Eric told Sherry, but I... Who's Sherry? Sherry Brown. She's a hostess at the club. He used to date her. Wait a minute. There were three men sitting with Eric when I went to talk with him last night. They all knew I was going to be there. Who were they? I don't know. Would this uh, Sherry know? She might. Time. I like you. You're certainly one of the best singers I ever heard. And I want to hear you sing some more. I'm going to take you on. Now... What's her name, this Sherry? Brown. 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 Maybe I better have a talk with her. Thank you, Ben. Yeah. But, look, you, you know I like to sing, but there's something you don't know about me. What's that? I like to gamble. Well, 
I like to be on the edge once in a while. Well, you don't understand. I like to make a bet. Well, everybody puts a dollar or two on the home team every now and then. Last bet I made was for twenty-five grand. You bet twenty-five thousand dollars on a football game that I lost. You lost twenty-five thousand dollars? Well, actually, I owed it to my bookie, who who just happened to be Eric Gaston. You owed twenty-five thousand dollars to the man you're charged with murdering? Yeah. With him dead, the debt's wiped out. Oh, the DA's gonna have fun with this one. I thought I had it licked. I quit going to the Gamblers Anonymous meetings. I thought I was cured. Have you got any other surprises for me? No. Thank God. Mullins told me he knew you. Going to represent him? Yeah. What's that? The victim was wearing that ring. Apparently, he and the killer had a real dust-up because Eric Gaston arrived at the morgue with a big cut and bruise on his jaw. But he gave as good as he got, at least one good ripe, because that's what's left of the ring. You mean he hit the, he hit the killer so hard he shattered the stone in the ring? That's right. Well, <laughs> there you go. There I go, where? My client doesn't have a mark on him. So, maybe uh, Gaston didn't connect with his face. Maybe he uh, hit his belt buckle or something. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Excuse me, is there Mr. Ben Matlock here? Yeah, I'm Ben Matlock. Hi, I'm Sherry Brown. I brought the picture. Oh, thank you for coming down. Can we talk someplace else, please? Oh, sure. I took this when I first came in. Mm. Eric asked me to. Oh. Why does this guy look so familiar? That's Roy Stevens. He's a network sportscaster, Channel 4. Oh, yeah. You know these other guys? Oh, yeah. That's John Delaney. He's a, a big agent, movie stars, and basketball, football superstars, too. That's Tom Hermansky. He breeds racehorses. One of his horses won a Preakness about four years ago. Oh. How do they get to know one another? College, they played football together at Baxter University. Well, what did Eric want to talk with him about? I, I don't know. I, uh, he didn't tell me. You and he were uh, was, uh, close? Very. Hey, Ben. Oh, uh, Sherry Brown, this is Conrad McManus, investigator. We were just talking about Eric Gaston. Did you know he was a bookie? Mr. Matlock, he had a lot of phones and a ledger by his bed. I know he wasn't selling magazine subscriptions. This ledger, you know where it's at? I have no idea. It's um, in his office, I suppose. Listen, uh, you can hang on to that. Oh. <laughs> what a day. The guys I'm with, I usually dump them while they run back to their wives. No one's ever died on me before. It must be a shock. And, well, thank you. You've been a big help. Yeah. No, I'll tell you exactly what I want, Norm. I want a signing bonus, I want a fair salary, and I want performance incentives, and I want to know today. You got that? No. That's a coffee. No. Mm -hmm. Come on, Norm. You're not even in the ballpark. Okay. You want Hutchison or not, yes or no? No, thank you. Uh-uh. Uh -uh. No, no, Norm, you don't understand. Tomorrow's too late. You got five minutes to call me back or I'm on the phone with the Raiders. You got that? John Delaney, you must be Ben Matlock. Yeah, I'm Ty Mullins, lawyer. Ah. Is that a, a bruise on your chin? No, no, it's just a shadow. That's a shadow. I understand that, uh, that you and Eric Gaston were great friends. Uh-huh. Yeah, played college football with him. Eric was a star running back, and I was his right tackle. Won the championship my sophomore year. Hey, 
Yeah, and I hear that you and a couple of other ex-football buddies were uh, at his place uh, the night before he was murdered. Yeah, one of our regular get-togethers, you know, a few beers, a lot of laughs. Well, mostly bragging about the glory days. Yeah, yeah, I guess that. Did you know that Eric was a bookie? Of course I did. Did you ever place any bets with him? Gambling's for losers, Mr. Matlock. Well, yeah, you got that right. It still seem, seems strange for a, a sports agent to be friends with a bookie. Did, uh, <clears throat> did he ever ask you for tips, you know, like who was injured and who wasn't? No. I mean, a bookie would pay big money for that kind of information. I said he never asked. So, somebody told me that, that you and he almost came to blows uh, at his club a couple years ago. It was over a girl. Oh, don't tell me. Next question you're going to ask is where was I at the time of the murder, right? It wouldn't hurt. I was right here. Yeah, Delaney. Yeah, Norm. No. No. No, I can't give him those figures, Norm. That insults me, you know that? <laughs> Quick, where's the kitchen? This sucker's heavy. What? What in the world have you got in there? Supper. You're a kid. Yeah, boy. Ooh, it's still hot, too. Oh. <laughs> well, don't just stand there, man. We'll get us some plates and silverware. You don't want to eat Morocco style, do you? Boy, I'm full as a dick. <laughs> You eat like this all the time. I don't think I got this way eating salads, do you? <laughs> <laughs> now, what, what's, what's some of this stuff called? <laughs> Let's see here. Uh, well, this one was called Evelyn Walters Never Fail Sunday Baked Chicken. We had a little bit of Rebecca Venerable sauerkraut salad. And last but not least, mm. Goldie's Yo-Yo Pudding. Yeah. <laughs> Outstanding. <laughs> All of them. I'll stand. Let me help you clean up this no, mess. Oh, no, no. Leave it. I'll get that. Well, let's go, let's go in the other room in here, little Tim. You got it. Yeah. <laughs> go on in here. Ty, I don't pretend to know much about compulsive gambling, but from now on, you're not to as much as buy a lottery ticket. You understand? I understand. Okay. Uh, did uh, Eric Gaston have a ledger? Yeah. He kept it in his uh, top drawer in the desk at the club. It's not there. How long was he a bookie? Since something he learned in college. In college? Played much? <laughs> no, not much, no. That's a shame. You know, these things are like women. They like to be stroked time to time. <laughs>
Hello, John. What do you have? Where's your wife? She's over in Linville visiting her mother. Why? Just want to make sure we're alone. So which one of you did it? Wait a minute. You think one of us killed Eric? Hey, all I know is Ben Matlock thinks I killed Eric. Now, just who the hell am I protecting here? Well, hell, here? we thought you killed Would him. you guys cool it? That is not why I brought you here. We've got a problem. Hi, Tom. This is Sherry. Bet you, Roy, and John think it's all over, huh? Well, surprise. Guess who has you-know-what? I was just going to turn him over to the police, but then I thought, I can't do that to such sexy guys. So, fellas, they're yours. For 50 grand apiece. Think it over. Call me tomorrow. Who the hell is Sherry? Oh, that, that's a blonde bimbo that was always hanging around Eric at the club. When'd she call? She called me this morning on my private line, and you wish she was a bimbo, John. She is smart and dangerous. Late night. Oh, uh, that, that, that's okay. Have you got the key? Right well, where else can we look? Beats me. Now the kitchen? Yeah, well, I've, I've never been in the kitchen. It wasn't my cooking that turned Eric on. I'm beginning to believe it's not here. So, where do you think the ledger is? Well, whoever killed Eric has it, I guess, or had it, or maybe it's destroyed by now. Who knows? Well, thanks for coming over. <laughs> Don't drive with my eye. That car was heading right for us. You all right? Yeah, I'm okay. I'm just a little shaken up. I I'm gonna get going, okay? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. You didn't get a good look at the driver. Nor the license plate. Well, you're sure it's one of the suspects? Or somebody they hired. Who else could it be? But you don't have anything on any of the suspects. Why would anybody bother? Maybe they think I got something on them. Or maybe I got something on them and don't know it yet. Think it'll run? Yeah, sure, with the tow truck pulling. Bad joke. Jerry? You want me to give you a lift? No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. year that the Baxter Falcons are celebrating a silver anniversary. Coming off of what has to be considered their worst year ever, the Falcons are attempting Roy to bring... Cut, cut. Oh, whoa, you're not live or anything, are you? No, no. If we were, I'd be screaming now. You're a friend of Eric Gaston's, right? That's right. Played football with him at Baxter University. Matter of fact, me and two other old friends of his were at the nightclub the night before he died. Doing what? Well, you know, a couple of drinks, a few laughs. Like I said, uh, we were old friends. Excuse me, what, uh, what do you keep staring at? Oh, that's right, you're wearing makeup. Of course I'm wearing makeup, I'm doing a show. 
I'll bet sometimes that comes in handy. You cut yourself shaving, nobody noticed, huh? Yeah, yeah, I guess so. You ever placed bets with Eric? Yeah, yeah, we all did. Your own money when he died? No. And I don't appreciate what you're implying. I told you Eric and I were friends. Even friends have arguments. Yeah, well, we didn't. Besides, I, uh, I was taping my interview with the coach of the Atlanta Falcons on the morning that Eric was killed. We started in at 9.30 and we finished taping at 10.30. You don't believe me, you ask him. He'll tell you. And if you don't mind, excuse me. Excuse me. It's Martin Kravitz? That's right. How you doing? I'm Comrade McMasters. Private investigator. All right, Jubal, that ought to hold you. It's better. A real private eye, huh? Yeah. You remember Eric Gaston? Yeah, I sure do. Best running back this school's ever seen. No surprise whatever happened to him. Why do you say that? Eric was always in trouble. He only played by one set of rules, his own. That's what got him kicked out of here. He got kicked off the football team? No, he's kicked out of school. Expelled in the middle of his senior year. Why did they expel him from school? Gambling. Yeah, he was putting money on Baxter football games. He would bet on the opposing team, then he would manipulate the point spread by faking an injury or taking himself out of the game. The kid was just too damn smart for his own good. You remember John Delaney? Delaney. Yeah, yeah, he played right tackle. What about Tom Romansky and Roy Stevens? Wide receiver and nose guy. What about him? Were they involved in the gambling too? No, no, just Gaston. The other guys were, I'd remember. I'm sure he would. Okay, thank you, Mr. Kravitz. He made my heart stop out there today. And his best time ever. Uh, Mr. Hermansky? Uh, hi. I'm uh, Ben Matlock, Ty Mullen's lawyer. Oh, good to meet you. Your wife told me you were back here, said you were expecting me. John Delaney Roy Stevens said you'd show up. Uh, John, Roy, Eric, and me, friends from way back. Now, I've heard that. You ever come face to face with a Triple Crown winner before? Won the Triple Crown? Not yet, but he will. A lot of money to be made in horses. A lot to be spent, but a whole lot to be made. You mean racing them or selling them or betting on them? <laughs> All three. Did you ever place any bets with Eric? No, sure. Maybe uh, you owed him money or he owed you money. I had no reason to kill Eric, Mr. Madlock. Mr. Hermansky! Telephone! All right. What's more, I couldn't have killed him. I lift weights every morning from 9 to 10. Here? Lloyd's gym, if you'll excuse me. Tom Hermansky. That was really stupid, Tom. Who is this? Sherry, the woman you just tried to run over. What are you talking about? That's going to cost you guys an extra 25 grand. Now, just a minute. That makes $75,000 a piece, and I want it tomorrow. You're out of your mind. That's impossible. Well, I hope not for your sake. I want you to bring the money in cash to the Skyview Lounge to the airport tomorrow at 1 o'clock. Now, Tom, if the cash isn't all there, or if you bring company, you guys are in the evening edition, and you can bet on it. I just looked into something that's going to help the kids. It's Frankie Lancel. I know, he's a bookie. 
I know. I just talked to him a minute ago. I don't want to hear that. I didn't place a bet, Bill. Frankie just told me that Eric was into a couple of loan sharks for 150 grand. How did that? Apparently, he took a whooping last weekend on a couple of games. They were putting a squeeze on him real hard. I mean, he wanted to squeeze somebody back. Hmm. What's down? <laughs> I told you I need a green bay back. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Five bucks, bitch. It's, it's not even a bet. Sir, I believe this belongs to me. Aren't you forgetting something? You'll get the negatives when I'm sure there's two hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars in here. That wasn't our deal. Sorry. I'll call you tonight. food every time you come over here. I enjoy it. You like that? Yeah, it's good. What's it called again? Aunt Bessie's sweet potato pie. You know, they say that when Aunt Bessie's husband died, she baked a pie and put it in the coffin. Yeah. Oh, yeah, she was very classy. Went all the way. She put in a, a linen napkin, dental floss, and mouthwash. But, of course, he had to eat it from a paper plate with a plastic fork. But it was the thought. I'll give, you, I'll give me some more for my turn. Hey, man, I didn't tell you. We got a gig Saturday, and you won't ever guess where. Where? Gaston's Blues Club. New owner called me today. Is that the irony for you? Me playing at a club that used to be owned by the guy I'm on trial for murder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Where'd this come from? Oh, man, you spoiled my surprise. That's the first payment for your services. You didn't answer my question. Yeah, where I get it from? Um, man, my folks, they're so great. When they found out I was in prison, they sent over 10 grand. They mailed you cash? No, no, they sent a, a, a check, which I, I cashed because it was under my name and all. <laughs> you been gambling? No, Ben. I told you I'd stop. Answer my question. No. It's from my folks, honest. Ty, you got to do something for me. Anything, Ben. Tell your folks I said thank you. I'll do that. Play something.
Jerry? Tattoo? No, he had two tattoos on, on, on either forearm. Huh. Some kind of flowers or something. About six foot, 190 pounds, dark hair. Yeah, how'd you know that? Sounds like a guy that works for Tom Hermansky. I saw him out at the ranch. I think they're looking for Eric's ledger. They're looking for something. Sorry to keep you waiting, but I had no idea you'd be dropping by. Oh, that's okay. I didn't know I was coming over. I, I just got to thinking about uh, Sherry Brown and wondering why your man broke into her house. What are you talking about? Are you and your two football buddies in on this together, or were you acting on your own? You've totally lost me, okay? Well, you married well. Your wife could have given you the money to pay Eric off. Why kill him? Look, I don't have time for this. I should have gone to the police first, I guess, but I thought I'd give you a crack at it. Get out. Well, okay, if that's the way you want it, but I'll just have to come back with a subpoena. Maybe bring the police with a warrant. That's fine, I'll take my chances. me. The three of us have got to talk now. Lot number 14 on your program, ladies and gentlemen, a fine piece of horse flesh that has a chance to make you some good money on the track. 4,000 now, 4,500, will you bet 4,500, will you bet 4,500, will you bet 4,500 now, 5, 4,500 now, 5,000, will you bet 5,000, will you bet 5,000, will you make 5,000, 5,000 now, 6, 5,000 now, 6,000, will you bet 6,000, will you bet 6,000, will you bet 6,000, will you bet 6,000, 5,000 now, 6,000 now, 6,500, 6,000 now, 6,500, will you bet 6,500, will you bet 6,500, will you bet 6,500, will you bet 6,500, 6,500 now, 7,000. What do you mean Matlock knows something? He knows that somebody ransacked Sherry's place. Somebody working for me. Did he find the negatives? Great. Well, did that crazy broad tell him what the guy was after? What are you, stupid? Eric had those negatives for 15 years and she knows it. No. No, she's not going to tell anybody about him until she's milked this bone dry. Yeah, well, I can't get any drier. One more payment to her and I'm finished. Me too. So, what are we going to do? Whatever it takes. You think about it. Let's talk tonight, huh? Fire number 84. Thank you very much, sir. Number 15 on your program, ladies and gentlemen, on a really fine piece of horse flesh. 8,500 now, 9,000, will you bet 9,000, will you bet 9,000, 9,000, 9, 9,500, 9,000, I'll bet 9, 9,500, 9,500 now, 10,000, 9,500, I'll bet now, 10,000, will you bet 10,000, I have 10,000, will I have 10,000, I have 10,000, will you bet 10,000, will you make it 10,000, will you make it 10,000, will you make it 10,000, 10,000, 10,500 now, 11,000, 10,500 now, 11, will you bet 11? Negative. You mean, you mean they're being blackmailed? And from what I heard, it's been going on for years. Sherry's just taken up where Eric left off. They're after the negatives. They're not after the ledger. (coughs) 
Hello? Hello, Mr. Matlock? Sherry? Mr. Matlock, I'm scared. They're going to kill me just like they killed Eric. Where are you? I'm at a friend's cottage. I, I thought it would be safer. Listen, there's something I haven't told you. We need to talk. About how you've been blackmailing those three men? How did you know? You answer my question first. Now, what have you got on them? Meet me tomorrow at the parking lot at Lake Wheeler, and I'll tell you everything. What's wrong with right now? I hid something that I need to show you. The negatives? You know? Yeah. Well, I, I can't get them till tomorrow morning. The parking lot, Lake Wheeler. Can you be there at 9 o'clock? You bet. See you then. Well, Conrad, huh. we're going to see the sunrise tomorrow. on the butt. Mm. Now that's it. like one of the boys got up earlier than we did. Hey, Sheriff, any sign of the body? Nope, probably never will find it. That boat was blown to smithereens. Any idea what caused the explosion? Your guess is as good as mine. I thought. What's that? This engine's stone cold. Sherry didn't want me to come up last night because she said she couldn't get the negatives till this morning. But if she went somewhere before we got here, she didn't drive. Maybe she used a boat. Could be. Southeast Security Bank. Two days ago. Come on, guys. We have a serious problem. I want to hear some solutions. Well, is this my lucky day? I'd hope to catch one of you, and here you all are. <laughs> I, uh, I hope I hope I'm not interrupting. 
What is it this time? Well, I got an idea why Eric Gaston was killed, and I, I wanted to run it by you since you were all such good friends. Mr. Madlock, Eric was killed because your client owed him $25,000. No, he wasn't. He was murdered because he was blackmailing you. All of them. No, keep, keep going. Don't, don't lower your pulse rate on my account. He wasn't blackmailing us. Oh, yes, he was. And then when he died, Sherry Brown started blackmailing him. That's why she was killed this morning. Sherry Brown is dead? I don't believe that. You seem surprised. As if you hadn't tried to kill her before. <laughs> at, fir at first, I thought you were trying to kill me. But then when I realized it was her, I thought you were after Eric's ledger. Wrong again. It was the negatives. That's what you were after. What the hell is he talking about? Do you have any idea what I he's talking no about? Idea. Not me. Well, those negatives will surface pretty soon. In the meantime, uh, I wouldn't go anywhere for the next week or two except to uh, the court. I'll see you there. Find out anything back? Now, don't I always find out something? No, not always. Most of the time, though. Well, a lot of time. At least 75% of the... Conrad! Two days ago, Sherry Brown cleaned out all of her bank accounts, withdrew every last cent. Well, that probably explains why they've still found no trace of her body out at Wheeler Lake, and why all the boys went slack-jawed when I told them she was dead weren't bluffing, were they? No. Looks like she faked her own death so she could skip town and nobody would follow her. <laughs> Think she took the negatives with her? Might have. Well, they might still be in there. Well, they might be, yeah. Why don't I take a look around? You gonna break and enter? The window was already broke the other day, remember? Uh -huh. Well, that's strange. Hey, mister? Uh, yeah? Uh, aren't you gonna leave anything for Ms. Uh, Brown? Oh, no, she's having all her mail forwarded. Forwarded? Yeah. To her lawyer? They don't tell me that. Oh, they did. Get something? Now, don't I always find something? Come on, man. She had her mail forwarded to 9070 Lakeshore Drive. Lakeshore Drive? I never heard of it. Lakeshore Drive? That's in Chicago. Ooh. Come on, baby, if you wanna go, wanna hop on that train to Chicago. Come on, baby, if you wanna go, wanna hop on that train to Chicago. Ooh. Ooh. If it rain all day, it will rain all night. The Chicago gonna be all right. Come on, baby, if you wanna go, wanna hop on that train to Chicago. Hey, I am so sorry. I don't know what I was thinking about. Hey, are you okay? Yeah, just you... hold it. Okay, um, look, give yeah, me your fine. name and your, your phone number and let me call my insurance agent. No, that's not necessary. No, no, please, I insist. Look, you may feel fine now, but you get home, your neck could be sore, your alignment could be off. All right, all right, it's Henry Macklin. Hey, nice to meet you, Henry. Yeah. I mean, not like this or anything. Yeah, I know. Right, yeah. My name's uh, Henry 
M A C K L I N. Yes. How you doing? I'm Conrad McMasters. Henry Macklin is a friend of mine. I've known him and Gloria for years. Is that so? Well, anyway, I just got into town. He suggested I come by. He said his friends are my friends. They should have. Come on in. My bet, 300. See you 300? Raise you 300. I'll just call. What do you got? Three tenths. Two pair. Huh. Yeah. Mr. Davis wants to buy you a drink. Mr. Davis? Yes, Mr. Davis. All right, Mr. Davis. Where is he? Follow me. Masters, nice to meet you. How you doing? Don Davis. Thank you. I try and meet all my new guests. I hear you're from out of town. Yeah. But you have friends here. Oh, yeah. I did some business with Henry Macklin a couple of years ago. And so he and I have been friends ever since. How about a drink? Another, uh, oh, soda water and lemon? Or you no, want something harder? No, I'm fine. Thank you. You're very observant, Mr. Davis. You're on quite a roll. Yeah. <laughs> so does that mean it's going to end? I never cut winners off. Never. Oh, sure you do, Mr. Davis. The easy way. What do you mean? You got a deck of cards? I beg your pardon? Do you have a deck of cards? Five-card draw. Two queens. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Which beats the hell out of my two fives. You know my role's gonna end as soon as you tell that dealer down there to make it end. You're good. Very good. I'm also available. Why don't you come back Saturday night? I'll let you deal some blackjack. If your work is as good as it looks, we'll talk about your cut. And your future. Okay. This boy's born good luck. This you will see. That's seven.
That was a good That's one. it, man. We ready? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hot rehearsal. Hot, hot. Come on, man. That's a good name, man. Hey, man, the horns were special. Very special. Very special. Right. Gary, take care of him, man. Tony. Yeah. No, man, don't break the strings on the stage, man. Don't worry, bro. Everything yeah, is cool. don't worry. Cool. Right. Don't worry about it. Take care of him, guys. Drive safe. You owe me, Ty. Oh, thank you, man. Look, I'll pay you tomorrow, I swear. That's great, buddy. But this time, I don't want you to forget. Give him something to remember. Oh, thank you, man. Ted. Ty. What happened? Frankie Lance. You've been gambling. No. You promised you wouldn't gamble. Here, call somebody from Gamblers Anonymous right now. Ben, I don't... No more lies, no excuses. Call. You, you're whipped and you know it. Yeah, I know. Well, call. I already have. You did? I did. You don't have a good track record, you know. Are you going to stay with it? I promise. Are you sure? I'll lay you eight to five. Dead woman. It's a mail came for you. What is he doing here? His name's McMasters. He's a new dealer. He's a private investigator. Hey! All right, hey! You don't have to get ugly. I just came to find Sherry. Now that I found her, I'll just leave. Silly! And head straight for the police. I got no reason to do that. You lie a lot, you know that kind Hey, of if way? you're so worried about the cops, you should do something about her, not me. What does that mean? It means as soon as the police in Atlanta find out she cleared out her bank account, they're going to be on your doorstep. Or didn't she tell you? He's out of his mind. Tell me what? Tell you that Sherry's gotten herself into so much trouble in Atlanta that she faked her own death to get everybody, including the police, off her back. Is that true? No. Hey, lightning's gonna strike you. Shut up! I said I'd help you because Eric and I were old friends. Now, did you lie to me, honey? No. No, he's lying. Kick him out of here, Don. Yeah, well, one of you is lying. And being around liars makes me uncomfortable. That's a lot. Now I have no place to go. I'm just trying to find out who killed Eric. Yeah, well, I didn't, so why don't you just leave me alone? Sherry! You're the only one that can help me. Murder has got to be one of the three guys you've been blackmailing. Aren't you the genius? Hey! You are playing a very dangerous game. No more. Game's over. I've gone into retirement. Think. Think. They're not going to let you off the hook until they get the negatives and you're dead. I'm telling the truth. They're going to find you just like I did. And when they do, they're going to take their time killing you. The negatives are in a locker in the airport. Concourse. What the negatives? What are they of? You'll figure it out. Nobody go outside. What happened? 
Somebody jumped. Should have just walked her to her room. Huh? Well, she knew what she was into. She knew it got Eric killed. That didn't stop her. You couldn't have done anything. But I was right there. So was the killer. He ought to be feeling bad, not you. Well, let's see here now. I... All right. John Delaney, Tom Romansky, Roy Stevens, three suspects. Yeah. A little younger, though. Yeah. Judging for the car, I'd say about 15 years younger, wouldn't you? Yeah, that would put them in college. Yeah. What do they got in their hands? Painting? Looks like it. What would a bunch of jocks want with a bunch of paintings? Uh, you don't suppose they paid Eric Gaston all that money just to keep, you know, that a secret, do you? You know, if memory serves me, I would say this is the untitled Brock. And I would say this one is the early Picasso. They're valuable? Well, <laughs> that depends. On what? On how well the buyer of the stolen paintings took care of them. I knew it. OK, when were they stolen and where from? The Metropolitan Gallery in Atlanta. About 15 years ago, unless I'm mistaken. <laughs> but then you see, I really am. Right. All right, were the thieves caught? No. But something else happened that night. What happened? The security guard was shot and killed. This meant it wasn't only a burglary. It was murder. Now we know why Eric Gaston was able to blackmail his three guys for so long. Yeah. Murder, that makes a difference. If it had been just simple robbery, those negatives would be worthless. Why? Oh, yeah, yeah. Statue of limitations. Yeah. It ran out a long time ago. Wonder which one pulled the trigger. Well, they could have hired somebody. Oh, uh, I don't think so. It feels like one of them, don't you think? Yeah. Yeah. Why an art gallery? Yeah, why not a bank or a sporting goods store or a liquor store? Yeah. Three football players robbing an art gallery. Strange, isn't it? Hey, up. Art major? Are you kidding? Hasn't been an art major in Baxter University football team since 1968. George Stolberg. Yeah, he thought it was going to help him avoid the draft. Cool. Maybe one of them was an art minor. Nah, not a chance. Not those three. The closest they ever got to art was the Sunday morning funnies. What about part-time jobs? Well, Stevens uh, worked a radio station, and it uh, seems to me that uh, Delaney worked tables at one of the sorority houses. Tom Romansky. Tom, yeah. He uh, made a career out of dating rich girls. You know? I think one of those guys used to go with an art major. Yeah, her daddy owned an art gallery or something. Big mucky muck at some museum. Who dated her, you remember? Well, now, let me think about that. Change. Time to pick myself up, get up off the floor. Cause I've been there, baby. I felt all the pain I can. No more till the blues come back knocking.
at my door mm-hmm. my door Ty, how about you? So far, okay. Have you any idea what we're looking for? Anything that'll tell us who killed Eric Gaston. You know, none of our suspects are on any of these team pictures. Well, they didn't make the team till Eric was a senior. Remember, that was the year he got expelled. He must not have ordered a picture then that year. Well, he probably wasn't in any of them. He only played half a year. Now, I bet you that made him mad getting kicked out like that. Not being able to enjoy all that stuff that goes along with being in a championship team. What? Fine. Your secretary, Mrs. Harrison, showed me your client list for each of the last five years, and uh, you know it's getting uh, smaller. Well, it's only because my client salaries keep getting bigger. Yeah, yeah, and 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 she told me that you recently sold your house and moved into an apartment, and that you sold your Porsche that you used to drive, and that you did have two secretaries, but about a month ago you let the other one go. That sounds like considerable belt tightening to me. Well, I prefer to call it streamlining. <laughs> yeah. The last thing you needed was for Eric Gaston to blackmail you for more money, wasn't it? Never been blackmailed, Mr. Matlock. Not by Eric. Not by anybody. Are you going to deny that that's you in that picture? All I know is I couldn't possibly have taken part in that art theft. Why not? Well, I did a little checking, Mr. Matlock. Seems to me that robbery took place late on a Saturday afternoon in November. Is that right? That's right. It was. Let's see. Now, hold it. It was November 11, 1975, between 2.30 and 3. Sorry. Couldn't have been involved. Why? Well, I was doing the same thing I did every other Saturday afternoon back then. Playing football in front of several thousand Baxter University fans. (laughs) Nice try, but no cigar. You remember... uh, um, Yeah, Martin Kravitz. Remember him? Trainer over there at Baxter. Biggest football fan I've ever seen. You ask him the score of any Baxter game, no no matter how long ago, he'll give it to you. And if he's not sure, he'll get out his scrapbook of newspaper clippings and look it up. See? You played football that afternoon, but only nine minutes of the first quarter when you and Roy Stevens were ejected for fighting. That means you had to leave the field, didn't you? And interestingly enough, Tom Hermansky hit the showers with some kind of shoulder injury. Now, the Metropolitan Art Museum is only a 10-minute drive from the stadium. You could have gone over there, used the information that Tom Hermansky got from his girlfriend, helped yourself to a couple of paintings, put them in the trunk of the car, and been back to the stadium by halftime with no one the wiser, and that's exactly what happened, isn't it? Of course not. That's ridiculous. How did Eric get on to you? Did, did he hear you whispering in the locker room about your, your plans, this, this famous scam? I did not steal any paintings, and Eric was not blackmailing me. Okay. Where were you between 9.30 and 10.30 the morning Eric was killed? I was in my office. I got there at 9. I didn't leave till almost 7 that night. Can anybody verify that? Absolutely. My secretary. No. No, she was running an errand for you, remember? You called her at her house at 7 o'clock that morning and asked her to go to a box office, get you some baseball tickets, remember? Uh, I do remember that. (laughs) Yeah, she didn't get in till almost 10. 11. 
And that would have given you plenty of time to return to the office after you killed Eric Gaston. That's not true. I was in my office that morning, and you can't prove otherwise. Oh, I'm afraid I can. You remember that big coffee stain on uh, the chair in your office? Well, your secretary had arranged with Gold's Cleaning Service to come over at 9.30 that morning and steam it out. I guess she forgot to mention it to you when you called her at home because it was so early. Anyway, when Mr. Gold got there at 9.35, he couldn't get in. Nobody was there. The lights were out. The doors were locked. Here's his invoice. Two days later. See, it says, unable to render services at 9.30 a.m. Tuesday, the 17th, because of no one was at the office to let him in. <laughs> oh, he charged you $30 anyway. <laughs> Highway robbery. <laughs> well, now, we know you were not at, at your office at the time of the murder. You care to tell us where you were? No. No. <clears throat> this ring was found on Eric's finger by the police when they arrived at the scene. You recognize it? No. You don't? Well, rings like this were given to all the Baxter players in 1975, the year you won the championship. See, it says so right there. I don't know. It's kind of hard to recognize without the stone. Yeah, the ring is a mess. The police think that maybe, that maybe uh, Eric struggled with his killer and just before he died hit him so hard that he crushed the stone but i have a couple of problems with that i have a couple of problems the coroner found a long jagged cut along eric's left jaw and his report said it was inflicted just moments before his death and that would suggest that eric was the one that got hit rather than vice versa and the other thing is Eric didn't have a ring. Of course he did. He was a star running back, remember? No, 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 no. That was the year he was expelled for gambling, remember? He only played a half season. He didn't get a ring. Look at this picture. Now, this picture was taken at, uh, at Eric's club the night before he was killed. Now, look here. All of them have rings. See, they all, all have rings. But, but Eric, no ring. See? No ring. No ring. What's... What's happened to your ring, Mr. Glenn? I, uh... <clears throat> lost it recently. Yeah? Are you sure this isn't your ring? You sure you didn't struggle with Eric just before you shot him and hit him so hard that you crushed the stone in his ring into hundreds of pieces? You knew my client would be walking through the door any minute. You sure you didn't take that ring off your finger and put it on Eric's finger so everybody would believe it was his instead of yours? Look, you can twist things all you want, but that is not my ring. Conrad? You recognize her? I don't know. That's Robin Martell, the girl you went with in college. The girl who wore your ring for two years. She'll testify that she had it cut down so it fit her finger. And when you took it back two years later, you had to wear it on your pinky finger because it was too big for the other fingers. In other words, she will testify that this is indeed your ring. And when she does that, I'm going to enter it into evidence. And when I do that, two things will happen. We will have proven beyond a reasonable doubt that my client over there did not commit this crime. And we're going to make you look awfully suspicious. Not only for what happened to Eric, what happened to his girlfriend, Sherry Brown, in Chicago? And later on down the line, what happened to that guard during the art theft? Mr. Delaney, you remember once you told me, gambling is for losers. 
and it is. And it seems it seems almost trite to say now that murder is always a gamble. And you took it and, and lost. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, have you reached a verdict? We find the defendant, Tyler Mullins, not guilty. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. This court is adjourned. <laughs> I think you did. <laughs> Thank you, <Barbara. laughs> I'm speechless, man. All I can say is... <laughs> Let's have some fun! You only live once in when you dead. somebody yeah friend of mine he's a member of gamblers anonymous i asked him to come down here maybe spend a little time with ty he's also a record producer new york i sent him an airplane ticket tell him to come down here give ty a listen with any luck, he might wind up with a record contract. <laughs> That's really nice of you, Ben. I'm a nice man. I figured that's the only way he'd ever get paid, huh? Not too. <laughs> <laughs>